A victory today gives the Tennessee Titans their 12th win of the season. That 12th victory means the Titans are the number one seed in the AFC playoffs. Sack! Kyle Pecco! Tannehill stops, looks, looks, fires, man is wide open. Berkser, touchdown, Titans! Touchdown, Titans! That's A.J. Brown! Touchdown, Titans! Tannehill, he's buried, he gets away, he rolls to his right, he throws downfield, Westbrook Aquino all alone! Fires, Julio Jones, touchdown, Titans! Finally, Julio! Hey, it wasn't pretty, but we got it done, man. Number one seed, lockdown. All you did was get yourselves in the Elite Eight. Congratulations. Yeah. You earned it. We're just getting started, man. Keep pressing. Take advantage of every day from now until we go again. Win on three. One, two, three. Win. Win. From the Bad MGM studio, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the Mike Vrabel Show, the first of what we hope are several postseason editions. The Titans win in Houston 28-25 to to go to 12-5 on the season and clinch the number one seed in the AFC. The Titans have a bye this weekend. A lot of heroes from Sunday's victory, but as we bring in the head coach, Mike Vrabel, I want to ask you about who I think might have been the biggest hero of the day at NRG Stadium, Coach. The Titans fans. Unbelievable performance. You could hear them all day long. Absolutely. And they came early. And they were uh, they were out there and we came out of the tunnel. I think they enjoyed watching our guys come out of the tunnel and warm up, uh, get a chance to, to get some autographs, to, to take pictures, whatever they wanted to do. And uh, that was uh, that was impressive. That was fun to see. The fan base is peaking at the right time as you get ready for the playoffs. Having these games at Nissan Stadium, they have a chance to create an incredible atmosphere. They do. They have a chance to make it hard on our opponent to come in here and communicate offensively and uh, be able to, 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 to hear the snap count and, and when they're in shotgun and all those types of things and, and also bring our, our team a lot of energy. And, you know, we have to play, for, play hard for them. We have to create some of that energy ourselves. But I, I know our fans will respond. Great job by them in Houston and a great job by the Titans coming on to win this football game. Offense, defense, special teams all contributing. But first of all, let's look at Mike Vrabel's first of two six packs and look at a chunk play down the field early in the ball game to Nick Westbrook Aquino. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot of trust, a lot of confidence. You know, the, the Mike linebackers running with them. Ryan stands in there and you know, he's going to get, he's going to take a shot. You know, those safeties do a nice job of coming in there and the split safety stuff. And, you know, I, I think Brian obviously has a lot of confidence in Nick going down the middle and, and Nick's toughness and the things that he's been able to do for us does not go unnoticed. Nick Westbrook Aquino with a super catch right there. The Titans also get their 42nd sack of the season. Second straight week that Kyle Pecco hits the opposing quarterback and knocks him down. Yeah, and this is a this is an effort sack. You know, you can see early on he gets blocked, he, he transitions, gets into the pocket, you know, is able to come back in and, and get the quarterback. You see the, the guard come down on him there. He swims the center and, you know, really two guys on him on that play and he's able to factor. You know, we, we need some other guys helping him out, but, you know, that was certainly you know, a guy taking advantage of his opportunities. His snap count went up and his performance went up. No score after one. The Titans get on the board in the second quarter. Ryan Tannehill, the first of four touchdown passes. He begins with Anthony Ferkser. Yeah, he does a nice job there setting the route up. Ryan's transitioning, but there's a pocket. You know what I mean? Ryan, you could see not many times where a quarterback can turn, look one way, come back, set his feet, you know, and find Ferk on the front line there. So, you know, really just nice job by everybody involved in, in taking advantage of, of really their mistake and, and dropping Ferk along the front line. Ferkser's caught a touchdown pass in each of the last two weeks. 
Titans get good run defense in the first half. This is Amadi Hooker, one of several Titans who ran to the ball. Yeah, well-timed. You know, well-timed blitz. I thought it, you know, good call. Uh, but his timing allowed him to come free and, you know, good tackle there. And guys, guys obviously swarming and trying to help. Burkhead taken down here. Titans limit the Texans to under 70 yards rushing in the win. Titans get two touchdowns in the last 134 of the half. The first one was to A.J. Brown. Yeah, I think this, you know, we had down trail. You know, again, I thought the, the, the protection was there. Probably could have gone up top to down trail. Um, waited for A.J. to clear the traffic. Uh, A.J. You know, gave him a good ball where he, he knew he would drop step away from the coverage and you know, there's Darren Trell again, finishing longer than the guy with the ball. He turns and blocks his guy, so there's not a collision there at the front pylon. That makes it 14 to nothing. The Titans defense does an outstanding job to get the ball back quickly, and then a 64-yard drive sets up this touchdown. Yeah, they did another uh, another good drive there, another opportunity to double them up. You know, we weren't able to, and, and it's a good thing that we were able to put these points on the board in the end of the, the first half because we didn't come out very well. Nick Westbrook Aquino with a four yard touchdown catch, his fourth touchdown of the year. And that for the Titans is our first six pack as they led 21 to nothing at the half. We'll take a look at what was to come in the second half with another six pack of plays. The Mike Vrabel Show just getting started. Stay with us. The Titans needed some big plays to hold off the Texans on Sunday. They got them on offense and defense. In our second six-pack, we'll look at some of those big plays, beginning with a sack for Jeffrey Simmons at a key moment, Mike. Yeah, that was huge. We were we needed this play. You could see the pressure in the pocket and just affecting the quarterback. We, we need more of that. And then, obviously, the well-run game. Jeff coming in there, picking the center, driving, and – you know, that, that's a great way to finish there. He's, he's really improved a lot, and he's playing great for us. Eight and a half sacks on the year for Jeffrey Simmons. The Titans in the fourth quarter have their lead cut to three. Great individual effort by the quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, on third and five. Yeah, too many guys standing around watching the quarterback. Thank goodness he decided to finish the play. Nick Westbrook finished the play, and, you know, we had to have it. You know, we were um, – this, this was a huge play in the game. You know, to, for Ryan to be able to, to stay in the up, upright and finish, keep his eyes downfield, and, and Nick to be able to secure the catch and, and give us some extra yards. The drive continues, but you face third and six at the 30-yard line. How about a little more Anthony Ferkser down the seam? Well, I mean, this is a lot of trust. You can see, you know, those are tight windows. Those are tight windows right there. He, he knows and. Everybody knows they're going to get hit. Um, Ryan gave him a good ball, a great ball, and uh, Ferk's able to come down, secure the catch, and you know, survive the ground. 24 yards to the six-yard line. The Titans need to get it in the end zone, however, and it's the fourth touchdown pass of the game. This went to Julio Jones. Well, you know, Ryan just standing there like he always does, progressing through. Uh, got a little leakage there. Collins, you know, was able to get some pressure on him, and. You know, Ryan doesn't flinch. He doesn't bat an eye. Uh, he finds Julio, comes back, progresses in his read, and you know, just, uh, just had a nice day. Julio Jones with five catches on the day. Titans take a 28-18 lead. Unfortunately for Tennessee, the Texans come right back and score in the next 256. So the Titans have to run out the clock. It begins with a pass. Yeah, we, we had to keep her on and, you know, able to, to get. And Ryan, you could see him moving. Avoiding the pressure, you know, I like him, you know, with two hands on the football, pulling it through all those drills that we work on. And then A.J. here strong with the catch. Uh, it's just going on the drive. Uh, and, and then the really good thing to, to finish after that. And the Titans pick up a first down on a great individual effort by Dontrell Hilliard and then come back with the flip play to put it away. Yeah, you know, we, we had some mo moving, moving parts, some motions. Uh, some misdirection and you know just felt like the way that these guys were you know throttled up in there I thought it was a, a well-timed call and you know you can see Don Trell giving it up for the team staying in bounds and and being able to finish there with the clock running and everybody uh, you know knew the situation and, and knew that that was going to be the game 
Dontrell Hilliard, nine carries, 57 yards. For the game, averages 6-3 per carry. And for his season, averaging 6-3 per carry. Smart football right there, staying up. And just a lot of effective play by number 40, Dontrell Hilliard. Yeah, plays on special teams and played some third down yesterday and was able to pick up a pressure and, you know, just uh, is taking advantage of every opportunity that he's gotten and, and he's helped us. And another fine effort by Deontay Forbin getting some tough yards for the Titans in the game on Sunday against the Texans. Yeah, we probably could have blocked a, a little bit better for Deontay. Um, I'm sure there's some cuts that he'd like to have back, but, you know, give them uh, give them credit. You know, I felt like the, their movement and, and their speed, um, you know, really played a factor in, in our just somewhat inefficiency at times to run the football. Some big pass plays, some good things in the passing game overall. What did you like about what you saw from your passing game in Houston on Sunday? Well, I think that there were times where they took A.J. away and then Ryan progressed and Julio was there to help us. You know, Nick Westbrook came up big. Ferk came up big. I thought the quarterback, you know, distributed the football. I thought we protected well most of the day. I think it could have been better at times. But, you know, they're, they're going to have some plays where, where they're affecting the quarterback as well. You know, I thought that we were strong to the tuck and, and, and the ball security and everything was was good. They batted a couple passes down, which, you know, we'd like to, to not have happen. But I think it was a very efficient day all in all throwing the football. Second half wasn't as good from your defense as you want to see. But in the first half, you did a lot of good things. How do you build on that, Mike? Well, I'm not trying to build on anything right now. I'm trying to fix the, the miserable third quarter, uh, our ability to affect their quarterback and cover you know, rush. We got a lot of resources up front and, uh, you know, we have to be able to come through and affect the quarterback uh, when we rush the quarterback. All right. Time now for your favorite part of the show. It's time to, it. it's Delta Dental time. Can Mike Bring Frabel guess? Whites. I know you love it, coach. You're trying yeah. to build on this. Snarl. Right I like that little snarl right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go to break and see when we come back if Mike Vrabel can guess this particular Titan. You got the one last week. I'm going to have to see that the whole break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show. Delta Dentals, can you guess this Titan? I think Mike Vrabel has this one. I don't know why, but I think he's got it. Mike, can you this guess this? This is not this that one? easy. It's not easy? No, it's not easy. All right, well, who is are you going with? Nate Davis. Nate Davis, he said. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Look at that. It's kind of got a little snarl going right there. That's fake. They were telling him to pose. <laughs> He's like one of the nicest guys you've got. He is he is a super nice guy, good football player, quality human being. You know, he is a he is a he's been an unbelievable addition to our football team and uh watched him grow and you know, it's just been, he's improved each and every year, I think. And obviously he, he means a lot to this football team. And, you know, he's like that, uh, that, that bear you see at the zoo that, that you're like, Oh, look, that cute little bear. And then all of a sudden it's just like, he gets on guys. And I mean, he's, <laughs> he gets on them and he can block them and he can move, move people out of the way. What about your five starting offensive linemen played every snap in the game in Houston First time all year that's happened. Well, I'll be. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to react to that, but uh, you know, we we just try to have everybody available, and and I know that the guys behind them are ready to go. Sure. Uh, if it comes to that, and and that that group got to continue to play well for us, you know, as we enter into the playoffs. When we come back, it's time for the Titans files. Amy Wells caught up with the mayor of Murfreesboro to talk about. What was an exciting regular season for the Titans, but what's to come? That's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio. A.B. Wells is always hustling for great stories for the Titans files. But this week, the story is pretty simple a win that gives the Titans a bye in the first round of the playoffs. One of the guys who's been the spokesman for this football team this year is the guy who calls the coin flip on the road, one of the captains, the mayor of Murfreesboro, Kevin Byard. 
In this week's Titans Files, the mayor spends time with Amy Wells talking about a successful regular season. Kevin Byard, the Tennessee Titans won the AFC South. They are the number one seed in the AFC. For someone like you who has been a part of this Titans team for a while, who's really seen the evolution of this team, what does this victory mean to you? It means a lot, man. You know, just understanding that, you know, we got guys on the team that's been in the league 10 plus years, never had a number one seed. So I definitely understand the impact of this. I understand that these things don't come that often. So I'm definitely grateful, happy. We're definitely gonna celebrate that. You know, going to this playoffs, man, it's just, it's just a good feeling that, you know, in fact, we have a first round bye. You know, we're kind of already in the Elite Eight. Get to watch some playoff games next week and find out who we play. What do you do with that first round bye? Because you don't know who you're going to be playing in that second round. Do you use that time to reset? Do you use it to rest? Do you watch all of the football games that happen that week? Yeah, I wouldn't say we necessarily reset. You know, I definitely think that obviously we get an extra week to get some guys healthy. But at the end of the day, obviously I watch all the playoff games or whatever. But it's really about keeping this thing rolling. Obviously it's going to be sudden death, you know, win or go home type thing. So that mentality is going to be getting echoed throughout the entire building that, hey, you know, we got to win one game a week. So it's, you know, it's go time. Describe that playoff mentality for me. What makes it a little bit different than the regular season? Oh, it was a whole different mentality. I mean, even when you go out there in pregame warm-ups, the crowd, you know, the stadium's already packed out. You know, it's going to be primetime football. The whole country's going to be watching you. It's a new season, honestly. You know, when you walk out there for the game, you're going to feel like this is week one all over again. So guys going to be juiced up and ready to ball out in primetime. Now, you didn't want to talk about it before the end of the regular season because everyone was really focused on the Houston Texans and what needed to be done. But the return of Derrick Henry, having him back out at practice, hopefully being able to get him back for the playoffs, what is that going to mean for this Titans team? As a defensive player, you see this offense on the field fighting for everything that they can get. What is that going to mean? I mean, getting Derrick Henry back, you know, at the perfect time in January, where, you know, most guys are kind of banged up. Most guys don't want to tackle that well. And to have him out there, obviously, being one of our leaders on the offense is going to be huge for us. Obviously, we talked about, you know, in the offseason, beginning of the season, you know, having that three-headed monster. And I think at this point of the year, we're finally going to have all those guys healthy. So, you know, watch out for the offense, honestly. Watch out. You were talking about the mentality shift for the playoffs, and that seems like something this defense is very familiar with, the mentality shift. The change from the 2020 Titans defense to the 2021 Titans defense is incredible. Just on paper alone, it's wild. The statistics and the numbers that the Titans were able to generate on defense in 2021, that had to have been a mentality shift, right? Absolutely. It started during training camp. You know, I think the guys really bought in, understanding that obviously 2020 definitely wasn't good enough. So I think everybody came into this training camp with a mentality that we have to be better. Obviously, the guys that John and, and Vrabel brought in, from Danico to Bud, you know, all these guys that we brought in, Jack Rabbit, they came in and immediately bought in, understood the, the responsibility that we had to this team to make sure that we played well. And I think it kind of showed out every single week and excited to keep it going during the playoffs. This is a really exciting time, Kevin Byer. You're so chill right now. How do you keep that level of calm going into this? Or is there a point where you let it fall just a little bit? No, I mean, honestly, just being a leader on this team, there's a lot of things to celebrate right now. But, you know, just like Kobe said way back, man, we, we haven't done nothing yet. The job isn't done. You know, our mentality and our entire focus on winning the Super Bowl. So, obviously, it's a time to celebrate the AFC South time to celebrate the number one seed, but all it does is just put us in a good position. We still have to go out there and prove it every single week because like I said, man, it's going to win, it, win or go home. So that's the mentality that we haven't done nothing yet. And you're doing it at Nissan Stadium. Absolutely. Hey, super excited to see all those fans. They really showed out this week in Houston. So I know it's going to be a packed out. We're really going to have home field advantage with the, you know, the fans in Nissan. So I'm definitely going to be looking forward to seeing those guys out there. There's no game this weekend, but Mike Vrabel does have Nissan keys to success. It's next on the Mike Vrabel Show. I've been curious all day what these would be with no game this weekend. Mike Vrabel's Nissan keys. What will he say this team needs to do? I bet rest is number one or in some form or fashion. Am I right, Mike? Absolutely. You know, we're back to getting some mental and physical recovery and, and try to get as healthy as we possibly can. Uh, we're, we, we need to be as, as full strength as we as we can going into these playoffs, and we have some time to potentially do that. Um, you know, there's a fine line. We're going to have to get some work done. You can't just shut down for, 
first seven or eight days. We're going to have to work. We're going to have to mentally you know, meet and, and, and challenge our players to improve mentally and, and also go out on the field for a couple of days and get some stuff done. All right, the second key, getting stuff done, that's got to be about fundamentals, right? Yeah, and we have some time to get out there and, and do some things and not prepare against an opponent, but just work on ourselves. And, you know, when you're, when you're playing very good football teams, which everybody is in the playoffs, it comes down to effort, it comes down to fundamentals, it comes down to details. And, you know, we have to be better in all three of those areas. Well, Mike, at least you get a breath this weekend. You advance in the playoffs without having to play, and that's a good thing. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. Great job. Mike Vrabel joining us. Again this week, and we'll be back next week with another edition of the Mike Vrabel Show. For the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. We'll see you next time.